Hi there and welcome. Back in the day when everyone were using through hole components, uh, they basically came on uh, strips like this and uh, appropriately they are called ammo belts. And of course that is convenient when you want to feed a machine because the machine can just uh, accept the, the belt and uh, pick the components automatically. However, these ammo belts pose some problems uh, when you're doing stock take, for instance, you want to know how many you have left. Or let's say you want to take aside uh, 200 components for a small production run. And uh, in order to count how many you have left, uh, people would use a machine like the one I have here. And uh, there's a little counter unit and there's a, a feeder here. And uh, basically what you do is uh, you insert your ammo belt this way here. And uh, you pull it through. And uh, this sensor here would count how many you have uh, pulled through. And uh, this machine I have here, it can count both forwards and backwards. So let's say you want 200 pieces, you pull through 100, uh, you pull 200 through. And uh, let's say you pull one too many, you can just pull it back by one. And then you can cut it off and uh, you have 200 pieces. So uh, that is uh, the high tech way to uh, count components on ammo belts. Uh, the low tech way of course is uh, to just put a ruler on your table and then measure uh, say 80 centimeters and that would be equivalent to 200 components maybe. But anyway, uh, today we're taking a look at this counter here. Um, this one I got from work and they're not using it anymore. As you can see there's a sticker here that says defect. Uh, so this is not really working properly and uh, we're going to take a look at it today and uh, see whether we can repair it. I know it's not very useful uh, anymore, but uh, I really like this mechanical thing here. It's really sturdy and there's a very good sensor. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's just try it out with some real parts. Uh, switch it on and see what's the problem with it. Switch it on. There we go. And uh, I'll press reset. And as you can see, it says zero. Looks, looks very nice. So let's pull some components through it. There we go, and it counts, you can see it's counting. 43, 89, I can pull it backwards, forwards, and it will count very nicely. However, you can see once in a while it goes, goes weird, and uh, basically that happens when it reaches 100. 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, and back again. So when it reaches 100 components, it fails. So um, yeah, let's open it up and have a look inside. So basically what we have inside are some um, op amps or comparators here. And they're taking the input from the sensor coming in through some uh, analog circuit here and converts that to an up and down signal uh, based on whether you move it forward or backwards. Um, there's a little trimmer here for sensitivity, I guess. You can uh, tune it a little bit. Uh, then it goes through some digital uh, gates and into a chip that is underneath here, under the display. So um, there's no microcontroller in this circuit here, there's just a counter chip. So uh, well, I'll just uh, remove the LCD display and we'll have a look at the chip. So uh, give me a second, uh, it has to be done very carefully. You can see it's already leaking a little bit here around the edge. So. Um, I don't want to fiddle with that while on camera, the camera is kind of in the way. So after I remove the LCD display, we can take a look at the chip. Okay, I'm back. I removed the display and uh, as you can see, the main chip is an MM74C947N from National Semiconductors. So basically that's just a counter plus a display driver in a single chip. And uh, there's no microcontroller as I said earlier, so it's very simple little design. My guess is that once you reach 100, something goes wrong, it's trying to turn on the display uh, segment and uh, something is wrong with the chip there. So uh, as usual, let's just check the power supply uh, on the chips to see they're okay. And uh, if they are, then uh, it should be just a simple matter of changing that chip here. If there's something wrong with the power supply, um, we'll have to fix that first, obviously. So first of all, let's just check the power from the power supply. It's using one of these little uh, jacks here, which is not, of course, ideal because uh, they short when you plug it in. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see the voltage across that. 
and it's 13.2 volts so that sounds reasonable I guess um, let's plug it into the machine here okay so first of all uh, there's a reset switch on the left here and basically uh, that will pull the relay here and uh, that will hold the power to the circuit so right now it's actually not using any power it's only when you click the button here that the, the circuit will be powered on and uh, of course that is uh, done because uh, it's, it can also run from battery but uh, anyway we have power now so uh, let's check the voltage on the op amp this is a, a 3302 op amp and that has a very weird uh, pinout compared to what they look like today but anyway there's about uh, 7 volt across that one which is fine then we have some CMOS 4 zero series chips and that has 6.7 volt which is fine same for this one same for this one uh, same for this one and same for this one so all the CMOS chips has uh, 6.8 volts around there now the main chip this one also has a very strange pinout 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 and that one has 6.8 volts and that is definitely wrong because um, this chip has a 5 volt uh, power supply or it should have a 5 volt power supply so uh, basically there is something wrong with the power supply and uh, my guess is that that would have blown this chip here Maybe if we are lucky, when we get the voltage down to 5 volt, um, that the chip will recover and continue to run, but otherwise we have to get a replacement for this chip. Uh, the CMOS chips, of course, they can handle up to 20 volts or something like that, so they are not critical. If they are running on 6.8 volts, that's not a problem at all. So I guess we have to take a look at the circuit and uh, see where the 13 volt from the regulator gets regulated down to 5 volts. The weird thing here is that I don't see any uh, I don't see any voltage regulator at all. So um, I guess I have to trace this circuit out. There are a couple of diodes here that, that looks like a Zener diode. And uh, that should maybe be used for regulation. So that has 6.8 volt across the Zener diode. So uh, maybe that is a... 5 volt or 4.7 volt diode and that has blown I don't know but um, yeah let's have a look at the circuit uh, I will try and trace it out and uh, once I've done that I'll come back and we can have a look at what's actually going on okay so I'm back and I've been looking at the power supply circuit for this board here and basically there isn't any um, the circuit basically looks like this the voltage comes in here this little 10 volt Zener diode to clamp any noise or any spikes on the supply then there's a capacitor and then there's the on off switch here this is just a normal push button so when you push the button here current will flow and uh, there will be power to the circuit at the same time there will be power to the coil of this relay and that will pull uh, pull in the contacts and close here so even when you release the button here current will still be flowing through here and uh, that's basically it so um, I just need to do one more little measurement to verify this and uh, basically what I want to do is um, with this chip removed I want to measure the voltage on the circuit because all the power sub because all the the CMOS chips and the and the and um, what do you call it the op amp here can handle easily the 12 or 13 volts coming in from the power supply uh, so if my theory is correct and that means the main chip is getting something like 12 volt in where it should be only getting 5 and um, that will be clamped down to 6 point something uh, by the protection diodes in the chip itself and obviously that is not a, a good solution um, so that shouldn't be it shouldn't be that the chip here is doing the voltage regulation on board the chip uh, based on some uh, diode uh, clamping in here there should be a 5 volt regulator outside somewhere so uh, let's just take a measurement here and uh, see what we get I'll just poke in the diode into the hole here on pin 28 which is uh, the supply pin for this chip and uh, let's see what's the voltage oops wrong pin there we go switch it on 
and there's 10 volts here. So that is the Xenon diode clamping and we have 10 volts directly on the main chip here. And uh, that is definitely not correct. So um, yeah, the power supply that has been supplied or that's been used is the wrong type. If we have it here, it's a, I'm not sure if you can see it, whether it will focus. Uh, but basically this is a 9 volt power supply and it has a 13 volts out or something like that. So uh, yeah, looks like the wrong power supply has been used with this board. So uh, let me just try and uh, supply this board with 5 volts and see whether the chip has been damaged from the over, over voltage. And we have 4.1 volts. That is not so good because I just measured. We, we should have 5 volts. So uh, something is draining a lot of current and I believe that is the main chip. Uh, of course that has been damaged by the over voltage. So, um, but anyway, it may still work. Just the protection diode must have been, uh, it's been overloaded massively. Should of course have only 5 volt at this point. But uh, let's try and feed some ammo through this thing here and see how it counts. Counts nicely. We are reaching 100. Hey, 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 hey. It works. Uh, it works. There's a little bit of ghosting on the display. Um, but basically it works. So basically the problem... So the problem was just a faulty power supply. And uh, I'm really happy with that. Uh, unfortunately I don't think I can do anything about the ghosting uh, on the display. Because... Um, I think the display has gotten some uh, over voltage as well and the LCD display doesn't like uh, DC voltage across the segments. So uh, I think I'll just put it back in the box and uh, put a big sticker that says 5 volt only and uh, throw away the power supply. So uh, it wasn't much of a repair unfortunately but uh, at least it showed some debugging. So uh, yeah, thanks a lot, thanks for watching, and uh, see you again real soon.